what's up? Spider Lo, what's up? Uh, less one. Man, you had a very less one. You, you and Spider Lo, y'all had some very powerful uh, information on y'all last videos, man. So I want to salute y'all, kings, and uh, I wanted to just put in a little input because. I'm lame to a lot of things, and so, um, it's like I do YouTube videos sometimes. Sometimes it'll say where somebody can subscribe, and sometimes it don't even say nothing. So I don't know what I've even done, done wrong, but I publish it. So, <laughs> it's a couple of questions I want to ask y'all, and i uh, share a little information with y'all. And uh, y'all can chop this up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna send bless one email. I'm gonna send uh, you one uh, text message, spider law. You know, so you, I, you, I called in on your live. You told me it was cool. So you know, I like to run my mouth. I'm 71, so it, it is what it is. I'm gonna make this show. So um, first thing I want to know, man, that nobody ain't speaking on. Is Mr. Hoover, do he have seven concurrent life sentences or seven consecutive life sentences? It's a great difference out. If you got seven concurrent life sentences, then he only have one life sentence. If you got seven consecutive life sentences that means you got to do one get rid of that one then do the next one until you get to seven in other words they're trying to keep you forever okay for someone to get on YouTube and say you ain't gonna never get up and all of this and all of that you're running your mouth reason you run in your mouth you never know look at me I had 50 with a whole bunch of stuff run up in it but I still had 50 okay a whole bunch of stuff run up in it and I'm out so what does all of this negativity come from. But most of the time, all you got is family and friends that you grew up with that's going to check on you. Okay? And in there, you keep hope alive. You never give up. You never give up. Giving up is the last thing you do in there. So, by my homeboy putting himself in this situation making me think this man might just have one life sentence and that would change the whole complexity of the situation okay look at look at that lady that had all that time for the what one rock cocaine they let go after she did 30 calendars or whatever would you tell them to give up kill herself or whatever independent thing? and you got people out here talking about they gonna help you so man this is kind of like screwed up to me and another thing when a fella say You know, because your paper ain't long as his or whatever, and then you try to get in that old clubhouse stuff. Really, I done got booted out of that stuff so long, so much. I don't even, I don't even know when to talk or whatever because it's a, it's a talking thing. It ain't no really no action thing. It's a talking thing. But I ain't never tried to talk to this guy because the first thing that he gonna say that's gonna come out of his mouth is, uh, "Who is you? I don't know you. <laughs> Shit, you don't know, uh, nigger." You don't, you don't really know. To me, 
when you don't know me, that's a good thing. That's really a good thing. I mean, I, I, I mean, I really, man, that's really wonderful that you don't know me. Okay. Did you know? Did you know Carl Hampton? You don't know Carl Hampton. That's what I'd have told him. You don't know Carl Hampton. I'd have stood right beside him. As a matter of fact, I was standing side beside him when he when he got killed in Houston. You know who Carl Hampton is? He's Ken the Fred Hampton. Uh, and Fred, Fred Hampton represented a, a, a whole lot of uh, of the movement that uh, black folks was going through and everything, and so forth and so on. Did you know them? Uh, Mr. Big Money, Mr. Big Shot. Well, anyway, um, I just wanted to let y'all know that this man might have only one life sentence. And the reason I say that is because the, the long as he been down, long as he been down in the joint, you have inmates that live in that law library and they become so good that they 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 they, they, they call writ writers. And if he had consecutive sentences, um, they probably wouldn't got to work on that. So um, to to bring it to a concurrent stage because of the more laws and things that they had going on at that time, and it's a great possibility. It's a great possibility that uh, his sentences is run concurrent. And in the state of Texas, um, when you get a case, the governor can pardon you if you present something that look like it's going to help the community or youths or whatever. Um, I understand about the money play and all of this here, but you got people like Spider Low. You got people like that youngster, Bless One. They not, they not down with all of that stupidity, man, that you bring in and trying to go viral and all of that kind of stuff. They not, they not involved in that. And I'm gonna tell you another thing. A person can mess over so many people that. When it's time come, and when it's time come, it's there. And if you messed over a whole lot of people, how the police gonna figure out which lead to take? I've been caught up in that situation before. So. <clears throat> The dude messed over so many people. He didn't. He he didn't. When he was laying on the ground, he didn't know who shot him. And the police were trying to ask him who shot him. Man, who he gonna think about who shot him? I'm gonna tell y'all this. My mom. Went to her grave, asking me the same question. My nickname, Bunny. Bunny, did you shoot that man? I said, no, no, I didn't shoot that man. My dad would just sit up there and laugh. Sit up there and laugh. And she just would always ask me that question. I said, no, my I didn't shoot that man. So, Dealing with Rico, most of the time they start from the bottom to get to the top. I don't know if there's some kind of play being made or whatever, but 
these people that are speaking on this situation, and they don't know nothing about that situation, they need to leave that situation alone because, really, when those people got you, they don't even talk. They don't even talk. I don't see a friend of mine, well, I know his brother, a Spanish guy. You know, matter of fact, I called him yesterday, just kicking it with him, always kicking with him. He got that square life. You know? He got caught up, but they had to let him go. But they didn't let his brother go because he was on top. But they couldn't tie him in. At that time, you know, they had wires. They wore wires. Now they used the internet. So, when his brother got caught up, finally he got up out of there because he had a lot of paper. And uh, he got up out of there. As soon as he got up out of there, we was on the job, like, he said, man, my brother done got up. Shoot, one of the next week, he done left the states, the whole states. This is, this is what he done. So, he came back up, got his paper right. I wonder, do y'all remember when, uh, Mexico, they had them wars going on. His brother got caught up. I pulled over the service station. His brother was filling up his pickup truck, crying. Man, I got to go get my brother body, man, bring him back again to decent funeral, man. You don't know, man. I had to beg this man, man. Man, don't go nowhere, man. Man, don't go nowhere. Please don't go nowhere, man. You can't find me, bro. I see me in the block or whatever, man. It took me two hours to convince that man not to go to that place, okay? I done been around shit that happened, man. And, and, uh, he didn't go, and he thanked me for that. Sometimes we caught up in a funky situation. I can tell you a funky situation since I've been out. I got caught up in. I got another nephew. I got one nephew. He got out of them streets. He on operator. He doing his thing and he making plenty of money. He called me the other day. Hey, um, what's up? I saw I ain't nothing, man. He said, I want you to take me fishing, give me the game. So when my son grow up, I know how to enjoy life with him. Taking fishing and I'll know what I'm doing. I want you to give me the game. And he said, after the 20, I'm gonna shut the truck down and you pick what day and we gonna, we gonna go there. So I said, yeah, it's cool, man. So I got another nephew. He don't believe in square money. My baby sister. Had a heart attack, she passed away. And he was arguing with her that night before. I don't like him. My other two sisters, my nephew, and my brother that just passed away, they all know I don't like him. I think he killed my sister. But she was trying to talk him out of getting out of them streets. He'd have been shot five times and all that stuff. So anyway, my mama left all of us that house that I was living in. He called a fire. So by him being my baby sister's son, it was six of us, and so he get one six. So what happened was Right after the house caught on fire, 
I had a cell for a fire damage house. I had a cell for it and everything waiting on the paper. Well, the boy confronted me. I told him he could sign off one way he can get paid off. You know, he could sign off like my sister and my brother did. And that mean I just had a more paper. Well, he didn't know I had a sale for it. He went to going crazy and trying to show me to the point where I could have got this and I could have got that and all that. He didn't know I had a sale for it already. Shouting and screaming and shouting in front of my face, man, really disrespected me. People, neighbors down the street could hear him. Three folks I old dole down. He made a mistake. I've been to the same place you've been. I live in a $250,000 house and I got six cars. Well, first of all, he done dropped his location to me, which is real bad. Because I know where my sister was living. And I know that's the house he's talking about. Well, he was strapped. Keep in mind, he was strapped. But now I got to get out there a little bit, even if I just say, forget the house. I say, hey, boy, look here. Let me tell you something. You ain't been the same place I've been, man. Let me tell you why you ain't been the same place I've been. I say, you see your shirt pocket? That little place you've been for the little couple of years? And I don't know how y'all be getting them little two. Two, two, three, if you ain't got no paper in the first place. I say, that shirt pocket was for you to have them the pens and pencils in there and they send you to their school and all of that. And you see them COs and they say, get up and say, well, you're out of yes or no, sir. They don't send me to them kind of places, boy. Let me tell you where the place I was. The same shirt pocket was a target and we kept the MLAs running and them COs they did what we told them to do okay on the rocking round they did what we told them to do and we had it all we had from the we had everything okay so you ain't been in no same place I've been. And I know that he had a little figurehead with him and she was standing on the side of the car and I know that any little move I make was gonna be ugly. So he messed around and called my other nephew mama. By me being locked up so long, he didn't really know nothing about me. And she got at him. Boy, do you know what you done done? You better call your uncle right now and apologize because you come up missing, boy. stayed up all night thinking about what that boy said to me. But the other day when my nephew called me about taking him fishing, we, me and him going fishing, he still, even though he done got out the streets and everything, he didn't understand because I never mentioned it. Why? That I let Fulio make it. First of all, he's a damn fool. And he got one shot, he had one shot at me, he took a shot, okay? He took a shot. That's it, no more shots, okay? Even when my brother's funeral, I couldn't even go, my sister never didn't want me to go to the ground because he was gonna be there. I had to go to their house and stay, even though it wasn't nothing. I had to go later the date. But anyway, what I'm trying to say is, um, to y'all, if y'all can find that out for me, it would make me feel a little better from what I hope no 100 said about the man not never getting out. You get what he supposed to give up?
But my homeboy get me involved. I really think it's it could be a good play that he'll get up from what I know about these kind of things. Okay? Here we are talking about a person that works, I think, with the people. He dropped he dropped lugs. He dropped all kind of lugs. And the next thing you know, you caught up in a situation. Okay. So um he could drop all the lugs he want on me. Most of my homeboys don't. Except one. And he sit with the family at my brother's funeral last October. And he is my brother. The people can come with all they want. They can't. They get nothing. That's their job. They get nothing. They can whoop. I done been whooped. I done been drugged. I done been put in cells that was two foot wide and six foot long where you couldn't set up in. Bloody. Trying to seek information. Okay. Me and this boy is a different breed. And getting caught up in a situation with my homeboy, it's a possibility that he might cross my homeboy out or, or whatever. Because one thing that seemed really suspicious to me was that he was sent some information, let's just say from one of his friends. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Of a seal indictment. That's strange to me. What a seal indictment is, is that when they collect enough information to get to the top, then they open it and they file it. But in the alternative that everything is solid, it stays sealed. So how do you get in possession of a sealed indictment? I want y'all to tell me that, uh, bless one, shout out to you, young man, you really spit some good stuff on your last video, and lo, you know I hang with you, baby, and, uh, you get on school a lot, but you know, when you got on me to, today, I was already locked in that you had some suspects, and I was gonna tell you, I was gonna just make a video to ask you about it, uh, cause I know maybe on the cool you can find out and another thing since my videos even though I publish them sometimes they uh I don't even see where you put subscribe at or uh, you know well people could subscribe or nothing you know what I really just be trying to reach out to them youths man and, 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 and really want them to get off of them streets man and uh the movement that y'all got going is really sweet, man, and I just want to say one other thing. The game I had from uh, the old school, my nephew be doing his thing, and uh, I'll just take that little game to the grave with me. But it was always there if he stayed in them streets, I'd have gave him the alternative on finessing to make paper without putting your life on the line. And he picked up one thing from me, he's a loner. If you want any information, you have to squeeze him. And, uh, we're going fishing after the 20th. He's going to set it, shut his truck down. Now, this is what's going to be 
when I tell him about that other boy situation, this is how I'm gonna do it. You know, I don't suppose to know where he lived at. And I don't want him to get mad at my sister because she didn't tell me where he lived at. But this is the way I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna send him a picture of his house. And he don't live in Houston. I'm gonna send him a picture of his house and I'm gonna tell him, when we go and we going in your pickup, do you want me to come here or your mama house? And then I got to tell him what I'm driving. You see, because even though the square life is the good life, I didn't say be square. And it's easy to let the smooth taste fool you with this boy because he got all the works. So I got to tell him what I'm driving. You see, then he'll fully understand when this boy told me he had six cars and a $250,000 house. No good. No good. That's a mistake I don't never want him to make. He gon' he probably when I drop the picture, he, it's gonna stun him. Okay. Then when we get to rolling together, I'm gonna tell him why I gave that boy one shot. Cause it goes like this here. Uh, I don't know. You know, you might do something and then. You know, some people might say, yeah, I'm glad you got it. That's the right one, you know, and let you go. You never know what's going to happen. So, I know I don't have enough of y'all time, but I need y'all to enlighten me on them facts. And, uh, because it's very suspect to me that a person can get hold to a, a sealed indictment. And especially where it came from is more suspect. And uh, I'm gonna email my homeboy again and ask him, can I just have a sit down with him? Because we know the same people. You know the same people, he's just a little younger than me. And, uh, I just don't want him to get caught up. Because dealing with a cobra. But I know my homeboy. how to deal with a cobra. He'll turn it to a cobra, but he'll turn it to a five-headed cobra, and if he miss him with one head, he'll hit him with the other one, and that's, that's bad. So, with that young man, shout out to Spider Low. Shout out to my cousin, my first cousin in L.A., Compton. Shout out to you, Bless One. Shout out to uh, R.I.P. Carl Hampton in Chi-Town. Shout out to your family, man. Um, it was real cool with me. I was so distraught of what had happened that they had to take me straight home and then I was under the influence of something so I was supposed to get ignorant but that's neither here nor there. I'm gonna holler at y'all. I'm out of here later.